I hate being black, but I hate being black because I hate all the things that comes with being black. Hello guys, how are you? So this girl come outside and said she hate herself being black, but not because of she is black, but because of what they are saying about black people, what they are saying to her and the way they treat her. She hates that part, but let's dive into it and list it to this stage. I hate being black. I love myself and I love what I look like and I'm proud of being a black person, but I hate being black because I hate all the things that comes with being black. When black people talk about like all the things that we deal with, race, you know, white people always think, oh, it's just racism or it's just, you know, the effects of slavery or it's just this or it's just that. Like, I don't think that you guys understand, like, it's everything. If I go to a restaurant, my server is not going to come check on me ever. Like, I don't get good customer service or I get seated in some dark corner somewhere every time I go out. If there's a group of white people behind me that came in after me, but there's only one table available, they're going to get the table. That actually just happened to me just now, which is why I'm actually making this video, because I was thinking about how much I hate the way society treats me. And being an alternative black girl doesn't make that any easier. I don't know how many times I have to say this or if I even should have to say this. I know that I have an alternative appearance. I know that I have a ton of piercings. I know that I wear makeup and I may not wear the most, um, you know, um, um, reserved outfits ever in the world. I totally, although tonight I'm pretty fucking reserved, but that's besides the point. I totally get it. I know what I'm, what I look like. But at the same time, I just feel like what I look like should not warrant the amount of unhealthy, bad attention that I get. Like the other day, um, when I made that video, like putting up the posters, like the Bad Girls Club posters on Melrose, literally my manager, after we walked away, he's white, by the way, he told me, he said, you know, I didn't realize like, like how many dirty looks you get like people are really just so angry like just seeing you like every time they see you like i see people giving you the most dirty looks from their car and pointing at you and giving you faces and i had to tell him like all my friends tell me that i'm used to it i'm a hundred percent used to it like i'm used to it i'm used to getting looks and i'm used to getting dirty looks and i'm used to getting a whole bunch of things i've been harassed i've been you know hate crimed not hate crimed but i've definitely been called racial slurs or dealt with racism just like outside on the go at what point do you really blame people for being angry at what point do you blame people like i drive in my car i drive alone i make sure that i keep my car like slightly dirty so that my car doesn't look and i have a hyundai i don't have a glamorous car but i make sure that it's like not too clean and flashy because i don't want the police to pull me over i don't even want to get a nice car in the future because i think to myself well if i get a nice car the police are gonna pull me over more i can't fucking do anything i can't do anything and don't even get me colorism is everywhere racism is everywhere it's in everywhere and everything and everyone like i'm tired i'm fucking tired i, so I don't know who the person is um who made that video um but it made me really sad and whenever i hear black people say things like i hate being black it, it it's heartbreaking because you know the reality of it is is that yes it's hard being black not just in america but anywhere in the world right going out to restaurants going out to movies uh being a student walking your dog it's just hard people are racist people are white supremacists so on and so forth but the way that racism works is it wants you to hate yourself hate your experiences hate your existence rather than the people doing the things to you to make your existence hard, right? So I, I don't, I, I just get really, really sad when I hear people say they hate being black rather than take that energy and turn it on the people who are actually causing you the daily harm instead of yourself. I didn't like being black. Really? Yeah, I hated being black. I'd always hear people say black girls are ugly. Black girls are so, like all this other stuff, never understood why. That was the one thing that I hated the most because I knew it was the one thing I couldn't change. Mm. I was adopted by a white family. Growing up, like, I never really had that, like, black culture that I wish I could have had. That's hard. I didn't like anything about being black. I tried so hard to be white, but it's like, why did, you can't, like, you're, you it's cannot impossible. be white. Like, yeah. there's just not gonna be a way. So if I could go back, I would wish that I would have just embraced yeah. who I was and my skin color. You're only playing this 
if you value your life is to shut the f up. Listen exclusively to black, brown, and indigenous women, femmes, and non men. Ladies and gentlemen, here we have what I like to call a black supremacist. Someone that believes that the oppression of their ancestors allows them to oppress people in the present. Someone that believes that race is the end all be all. Someone that believes that their life revolves so much around the color of their skin that like a symbiote, race takes over their entire being. However, because of this, they gain some abilities or social power. And for all the people that don't believe that black supremacists exist, here's your proof. Through every resource you have, and use your privilege to back us in every way. First of all, are you trying to mind control them? Why are you talking like that? Second of all, this woman is the definition of irony. The fact that you can come on this platform and tell a skin color that if they want to live, they need to do and say everything that these other skin colors tell them to do and say or else without your platform and your well-being being stripped from this earth is mind-boggling to me you brought up their privilege yet you're executing yours right in front of our faces that don't look like oppression to me looks like somebody holds the social power in this situation and it ain't them the freedoms we have now are because of our fight and struggle bet on black bet on brown bet on indigenous put everything you got behind us move entirely out of the way wait a second let me get this straight you want their resources you want their power you even want their help but you also want them to move out of the way Huh? You said that the freedoms that y'all have today are fully because of y'all's own doing, but you also just admitted that you need their resources and you won't really be able to do anything without their help because you don't have the privilege to make change? Huh? Supremacy can be confusing. I hope she gets better at it. I think black women try to be white by wearing blonde wigs and things like that. No, I just feel like we want to look good. Do you feel like white women trying, trying to be black when they wear braids? That's their hair, though. They're just doing a the style. They just ask if he, like, if the black people think we white because we wear goddamn blonde wigs. That's just a like, little bust down. That's something new. That ain't nothing wrong with that. Natural is good. Natural makeup is good. If you like natural, go natural. If you like makeup, do makeup. But where, where do the black women get it from? Like the, the blonde wigs and stuff like that? Uh, oh, that is, I mean, a lot of people bleach their hair. A lot of white people do have blonde hair. Yeah, but so, I, mean, I mean the black ones. Where do they get it from, though? Y'all don't know. The white people? Yeah, yes, they do. No. Then who they get it from, who they get it from then? Because we originated. Where? From Africa. Us being us. It's like, no, oh, shut up. You, you, you over there. <laughs> you really a nigga. Okay, but I know there's certain little tribes that have blonde hair and things like that, but that's just a small group. Y'all put a blonde wig on your head because y'all seen white women do it. Not because, not because of no. Oh, I didn't do that. Not, I just think it looks good, honestly. You think it looks good? What's wrong with your natural hair, though? Nothing. Mm, do, you, do you guys wear that? Yeah. I want to talk about something important. I just hop out the bed and start recording. So excuse the bonnet. But if you want to learn a little bit more about the real U.S. history, then please stay. As an ethnic studies major and somebody who learns about African American studies daily, here is some more information I don't think you should have to pay thousands of dollars in college tuition to know. Do you know about the Tulsa Race Massacre? I was literally in college when I first heard those words, and yet it is such a major massacre that nobody talks about in U.S. history. If you don't know, within one day, a white mob stormed the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma, which was one of the most affluent black communities, burning this city to the ground. They literally had airplanes dropping bombs from the sky. This community was devastated, and yet its history is not really known. Why is this? Well, it has to be for the same reason that white families, I'm not even saying historically because this is not long ago, used to literally attend what they called picnics or carnivals to literally watch the festivities, the festivities being a black person being lynched. Proof of this is available on Google because they would take pictures as families in front of this lynched man for postcards that were supposed to be seen later. 
If Christopher Columbus was a man he was and George Washington walked around with slaves' teeth in his mouth, I don't see how any of this is hard to believe. The one problem that I have when learning ethnic studies or any sort of history is the fact that it's always taught from a standpoint where white cultures did the things they did because they were fearful. Fearful of what exactly? The black community, the Hispanic community, the Asian community, the Muslim community, the native Indian community have all dealt with fear revolving around one thing and that is white privilege and or white fear. Minority groups as a whole have had to historically fear white privilege because it is a dominant form of discrimination that does not make it easier to be a white person but inherently makes it harder to be a person from a minority group. We have no privilege that makes it easier to live through poverty. We have no privilege that allows us to bend the laws and get off on certain cases. Historically, we have not been able to commit mass genocide or enslave people. And yet it's all put on us as being barbaric or feared. The fear is not of us. And it has taken me all the way up to a college and reading through books and watching TikTok videos to see that. The fear is in losing a privilege that allows them to avoid hardships that we have faced historically. Please read about Yellow Peril, the Muslim ban, how society is taught to hate certain groups and fear certain groups of people, and then you will see they're afraid of losing power. There was definitely cannibalism happening in the antebellum days. I recommend people checking out this book, The Delectable Negro. I shouldn't have done the chef kiss, but... There's a part in the book that talks about the transatlantic slave trade and how white men on the ship would eat the black men on board. They would spend months out at sea and they would overpack the ship with enslaved people knowing that they would lose cargo. Food had to be rationed and sometimes they would get hungry enough to eat their cargo. Rumor of cannibalism was kind of quickly dismissed because America had to keep this image that they were a civilized society with all their guns and colonization. So yeah, white people did eat black people and they try to hide that part of history just like they threw our babies to the gators or they had breeding farms all throughout the south. Please don't forget to leave your opinion down below what you think and don't forget to subscribe, turn on notification anytime I upload you will be notified. Stay blessed and bye-bye.